Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. She's spinning. She's spinning in our imaginations. It's a servo test, and I have long since come to the conclusion that testing multiple servos in one go is just not the way to do it. It's just better to test one. I've been wanting to test this one for a while since they announced that they were coming out. The 8.4 volt. These are the, these are the receiver-powered versions. And thankfully, we are, we are definitely moving up in the world. They're now giving us a little card that uh, tells us what we have to expect. I mean, very expensively done. Uh, they give us 38 kg at 6 volts, 45 at 7.4, 50 at 5.4, 3.44 amp and 4.8 amp maximum draws on those. So ounce inches, very, very small to see. Uh, 528, 625, and 694. So those are the numbers we're going to look for. And, you know, I give the benefit of the doubt to every servo that comes across the bench in that I recognize most manufacturers are going to rank their torque in instantaneous torque. So stall numbers tend to be a little lower. So there is definitely a, a margin of error there. And uh, I will give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Uh, when we get to the all important box down here at the bottom of hit manufacturer target. Uh, if you're close, then then yes, then 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 you're gonna get it. Get this uh, get this guy up so we can get this guy fired up. For those unfamiliar with how uh, servos are rated for speed. They're typically talking about 60 degree transition. Are these guys 60 degree? Yes. They say 0.15 seconds at 60 degrees at 6.0 volts, which means this is... Um, I would say that's actually faster than that. That looks like... And, you know, 60 degrees is from about there to about there. Well, it's two-thirds of a full sweep. Well, no. So, that's 90... So yeah, 60 is about like that. It feels it feels a little more brisk than what I have come to expect from servos that claim 0.15, 60 degrees. I usually sit down and do the math and figure out what that means for 90 degrees. So that would be 0.22 at 90. So 0.44 for 180 give or take yeah yeah okay when we uh when we do the mental math and put it out like that yeah it's that seems that, that's that seems about right not to say that i'm just uh re repeatedly and unstoppably first second and third guessing myself but that's that's where we are getting this guy to uh, 601 it is oh all important we're gonna do it right now I have to push really, really hard. Now, we have had some things, some oddities with flash hobby, servos, flash hobby servos in the past where when we attach to this, we get it at a full pull, it just goes dead band. So he might get a mulligan pull or two, depending on how. This is a magnetic encoder, so magnetic pot, which is how under load it is. Like, watch the amps. We can go up to like almost a full amp. It doesn't make any noise. And then there's a little soft like. Uh, uh. I mean, if the hopes could be higher, I don't know how. Uh, it's going to come down to amp draw. Now, this guy is going in a rig that's going to be fitted with a Rhino, which has a 10 amp peak BEC. So it won't be a problem. Whatever this guy pulls, whatever he produces, that's going to be his real world number. And he is most likely going to be, because he's running servo and axle, he's most likely going to be running a, I want to say a 19 millimeter horn. Yeah, he's going to be running a 19 millimeter horn. So his actual torque in service on the rig is going to even be way higher than this. So servo, I've, I've long said that running servo and axle is basically like doubling your effective torque. I've been talking so long the scale went to sleep. So we'll, we'll get this first pull. 
the tentative first pull. Uh, oh, wait, is he reverse? Yes. N yes, he is reverse. This is another thing with Flash Hobbies. Usually I just throw this like that and that's the wrong way. So I have to remember this guy goes, he's backwards. He goes, he goes the other way. First pull at six volts because they give us spec at six and 7.4 and 8.4. And really what the machine doing is, is checking to see if, if the manufacturers are telling the truth. I'm just going to call it the 50 kg because I cannot say CLS 4050 RP. We'll see how this guy does. First pull at six volts. Okay, it never... See, like I say, we, we, we learn together. It never stopped. It has like a soft stall thing. So I saw 570 ounces on the first pull, which is probably after correction pretty much dead on. All right, we will we will we will try it again. I'll go for more of a speed. Okay. There's a thing going on there. The servo, I'm guessing it's because of the way the new magnetic, the 14-bit and magnetic encoder works. It won't let the servo dead stall out. So in theory, you wouldn't be able to burn this out. Like it won't, if it just feels that dead pull of nothing, it will just back the torque off. Now, this, this servo test is then going to have to go into two parts and the other part won't be for a while because I haven't built the chassis yet. But we have got to see what this looks like out on the rocks. Like, how is that going to affect its performance that it, it's unstallable? It won't just hold a dead number and build heat. Like, what well, we're going to go through the three numbers. We're going to do this a little by the seat of our pants. I will not be able to watch amps at all. I'm going to have to watch over here. And I'm going to want to see where the torque is kind of leveling out at before the arm just relaxes and lets it go. So we'll call this the first pull. Okay, we finally, st that one stopped at 493. But the number I, so I'm watching where it peaks and then I'm watching it'll dip and then it kind of catches. And it caught at 538, that's what I saw. So we're just gonna go nice round numbers. I can't see, like it's, bl it's blurring by. So we're going to call first pull at 6 volts, 538, though, I mean, that's at 493, but it was way higher. Same thing again, interpretive dance of the servo tests, 6 volts. Okay, I saw 523 that time, and I think that's that's a reasonably accurate number. Like, there's just... For a fraction of a second, it, it goes pull, peak pull, then it kind of, and then it holds there for just a few frames of what would come up on the camera. And then it's just a drop again. And I'm trying to look at that number, not the biggest number right when it hits. I want to see that number in the middle. Yeah. And I'd, I'll be surprised if we build any heat into this. So we will call this the final pull at six volts. All right, I saw, I saw 544. I saw 578 was the, the roll-in number was 578. But we're going to go off of 544. So these numbers, I mean, apply to them as many grains of salt as you would like. So the, and we, we, we've got to do this a bunch through this entire episode because we're apparently testing a completely different beast now. The average of the three poles was 535 ounces, which corrected to 495, which is respectively 38.5 and 35.6 kilograms. The manufacturer spec was 38 kilograms, uh, 528 ounces. 
yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, D you a hundred percent. Like if we were going by instantaneous torque, like the first number that I saw, we were in that five seventy range. Uh, so way over what it's spec at six volts. That's soft. It's I it's ice cold. It's as cold as it was when I hooked it up. So and that was probably five pulls. So that soft stall thing. I'm really interested to see how that uh, how that affects actual on rock performance. We might have to just throw this guy in baseline and 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 take him out there. Yeah. We have got a jump in speed and again just it is the dead silentist. It is the silentistest servo that we have tested yet i think i've actually i think i've just arrived at the conclusion that after he comes off the rig we're going to put him on baseline and we'll 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 hit the we'll hit the five to just to i have to i have to know i have to know uh baseline is a pretty easy guy to swap the servo out on he is he will be somewhat simulating what this guy's real world use will be servo and axle i apologize for my allergies they're brutal. Even the cat was sneezing this morning. So, 7.4 volts. We're going to do our three pulls, and we are going to see what uh what we get. I'm, I, I've, I'm almost sure that I'm just going to have to watch here and see where it comes out. So, we're going to drop in first pull, fit, flash hobby, receiver powered 50 kg, 7.4 volts. Biggest number I saw was 627. The number that popped in that little hiccup in the middle was 611. Where are we at? That's it's 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 it's, it's right there. It's right there. I don't even have to tear it because I keep having to roll it off. So we're gonna get these hits pretty quick. I got I gotta pay attention. We're gonna do a bonus pull at the end of this one just because I want to get an idea of what the amps look like. But I have to watch this so close on old Dr. Mita. That one I only saw as high as 574. I'm going to say 558 was the number. Anything? No. Nothing. Absolutely nothing yet. We will call this the third and the final official pull. I got to try to really whip it. Again, 587 was the highest I saw, but then I saw 574 was the... Like, it will... The number stays... Just a millisecond longer than other numbers. 574. So again, that air quotes average of the three pulls was 581 ounces uncorrected, corrected to 537 ounces. That is 41.9 and 38.7 kilograms respectively. And we were looking for 45, 625 ounces. We averaged 581. Now, I saw numbers at or around 625 on two out of the three pulls, and this soft stop thing on the magnetic, I don't really know how to account for this. So uh, almost clearly, they were not measuring stall torque. They were me measuring instantaneous torque. And the numbers that I'm witnessing as best as possible with our somewhat analog setup here is close to or over manufacture. This is supposed to be the highest speed at 8.4. Yeah, that's that's brisk, baby. So this should also be the biggest number. We didn't have a massive jump. We were up 10%. About 10% more torque. Usually from 6 to 7.4 volt jump, we expect to see a little bit more. And of course, we're not gonna we're not gonna hear anything. If the numbers weren't moving, you wouldn't even know I was pushing on the horn. I never did that bonus pull to look at the amps. I totally didn't. You know what else I didn't do? Yeesh. We've been we've been very fortunate. Oh, did I? Oh, I did. Why didn't you tell me that I had tightened those down? I'm starting to feel like I didn't. All right, we're gonna do three pulls at eight point four, and then we're you know what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just expand the servo test universe, and we're gonna drive it because that soft stop. I want to know what it does. 
So here's what it do on the rig. I did it again. Here's what it do on the rig. First pull, 8.4 volts. All right, I saw like 780 at first, and it the 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 hiccup was at 725. So that is that is a jump. That is so weird. That is so weird. Uh, it actually teared out. It it finished out. It locked at 553. We're gonna. I, I want to try anything. Absolutely nothing. It's crazy. Has to be 15, 16 pulls, and there's there's not an ounce of heat in it at all. That soft stop thing, maybe there's something to that. I've got to put a couple extra. I want to get three clean pulls on here, and I want to put a couple extra pulls. I want to look at the amps, which I have not done. And I also want to do like a turn it to a point and then just leave it and see if it will stall out there. Second o official pull at 8.4. I saw 689 and then I saw 678. So we're going to go 678 on that second one. I figure, I, I feel that's, I feel like that's fair. Make sure we're centered. Make sure we're slack. This is the third official pull and then we'll do some, no, still nothing. It, it's mind boggling. Every servo will have some heat in it by that point. A little bit of heat soak in it. This guy has nothing. So I it's I don't think it's dropping off. I think I'm just not seeing the numbers quickly enough. So the final recorded pull at 8.4. I saw 745 was the first number, and then it rolled down to about 698, 696, 698. We'll call it 698. But I definitely saw 765 was the first number that I watched roll. So on the three, what we're calling official pulls, we had an average pull of 700 ounces corrected at 92 and percent correction factor for the, for the servo holes to 648 ounces, which is 50.4 and 46.7 kilograms respectively. I can't tell you if those numbers are accurate. I saw a number. I never saw a number that was way below the spec numbers, they were calling 50 kg, 694 ounces. And uncorrected, we got 50.4, 700 ounces. I think it uh, absolutely 100% made it. And still, it might actually be a degree or two warmer than ambient temperature right now. And I think the servo might have been engaged a little bit. Okay, I want to do some, uh, I want to do two things. I want to hit one. And I'm only going to watch amps. I'm not even going to watch ounces. And then I want to do like a mid stall and just watch the amp numbers. Okay, so this is the first one. I'm watching amps. Yeah, there's a certain point you hear it go, and the amps just drop. I saw a peak on that of 6.6. .6. They say 4.8. So that's 6.6, .6, and that was right at the beginning. I would say the 4.8 is pretty accurate for, for the stall. Because from the 6.6, .6, it dropped off to those mid fours fairly quickly. And then you'll hear a little moment where the I'm guessing the magnetic driver fellow goes, we're stalled, don't. And then it goes, Bip, and the draw dropped to like 0.8 amps. So if we were to do this. So that really slow roll in stopped at 500 i got about 550 out of it let's see let's see if we can if we can replicate yeah super super consistent it was in that mid-ish 500 range and then just kind of rolled back we got that 508 Roll it again. We'll go real slow. We just kind of pull, 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 keep pulling, keep pulling. There's that mid 500 and then right at 500. So, all right, here's the thing. If we want to just discount and be like, those numbers that we're pulling on the just straight whip pulls, when we're getting those 
high 600s, low 700 numbers. Those might not mean as much. That 500 ounces, those, that 500 ounces, those are really real. That thing was pulling consistent. You saw it right there. Super consistent. I'm supposed to turn this off before I jostle it around a lot. Super consistent 500 ounces. So this thing is going to do easily 500 usable, reproducible ounces. That is, that's great to me. Because I don't know, with that magnetic encoder, with that thing where it goes, uh, we got a little warm now. Those poles put a little warmth into it. Okay. So the power supply is like 82. We've got 81, 82. We've got about, yeah. Yeah, we, we put some heat in it right there. But that was proper stall stuff, which I don't think, I don't think we've done on a servo test before. All right, I've, I've pulled out uh, Baseline's day-to-day. -day. He just runs the Flash Hobby, the M50 BHW, the direct power, 50 kg. Runs it all day on 3S. Does great numbers. That servo has been replaced. There is the 180 degree. There's the Flash Hobby 540 that we just had. Apparently, when I picked it up, I, I turned it off. It's quiet. It makes no no stall noise at all. Uh, the the steer angle here is ludicrous, and I I just figured it out. <laughs> when I pick it up, I go like this, and I keep I keep turning it off. I I th this is a this is a groundbreaking moment. This is a an absolute canyon first for a servo test because we test them on the bench. And then later on or whatever, uh, if the if the testing on the bench looks good enough, they end up out on the rocks. But because of that soft stall, because the numbers looked so good, the interpreted numbers, I I, I desperately need to find out what it what it actually looks like out there. And I think the best case scenario for this is that I don't notice the servo at all basically, because this is a 50 kg receiver powered and the SE only has a three amp BEC. It doesn't have the five amp BEC that is in the Fusion Pro and it doesn't have the 10 amp BEC that is in a Rhino. So this is a servo that we got to see interpretive numbers off of the test rig. And now right immediately, we are going to see what it does in terms of real world numbers. Well, performance. Performance in the shape of numbers in the shape of performance. This is something that's very preliminary, but I but worthy of note. The servo feels really responsive, like it feels really snappy. And from what I was doing just on the drive back, like every steering motion feels really super responsive and. It's going to be kind of difficult to get it into a spot where we're trying to... Yeah, it, it just... It, there's a real... Is saying a natural feel, is that is that weird? So ordinarily when... Uh, I came up real high there. Ordinarily when we get right here, we get a little spot where the bumper will hang up right here. Okay, so his day-to-day... -day, is a is a 50 kilogram flash hobby the m50 direct power this is receiver power so it's pretty much inarguably getting fewer amps we're getting less amps the 50 kg direct power is i think, I think a little cheaper than the 50 kg receiver power which is why i had not considered it previously but it was like i feel like we're wasting that giant 10 amp bec in rhinos yeah i'm never at any point feeling 
like like that we're, we're stalling it out. It's really smooth, really responsive. And then the steering angle we can throw on these axles is stupid. Yeah, like right there. You just, I can just stay full lock. Yeah, it's. I'm. I'm. Here's what I. My. I'm in. I'm between two minds right now. We're doing something that looks like a test, and at the same time, I'm trying to think where can I go that we're like explicitly testing the abilities of the servo. Yeah, like the position ability with this. Full lock stuff under power. Yeah, it gives nothing up. Yeah, that, I mean, for those that don't know, that little, pulling through that little line right there, is n that's not an easy line because it tends to want to shove you one way or the other. And I felt, the front end felt stronger. Like this servo to me feels stronger than the direct power 50. Even with the diminished, the diminished amps coming from an SE, not the strong, it's the same, I, I, my speculation is it's the same BEC that's inside a 1080. So you, you should see the same level of steerability uh, on a 1080 compared to an SE. Yeah, it, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to just say, oh, it feels strong. What I do want to say is that it feels oddly invisible. I'm trying to see, like, pick a line where steering is paramount to your ability to pull forward. It might be the quietest servo I've ever used. Like, if you do the wheel flick, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised because I have been a huge proponent of the direct power servo because if you can, why wouldn't you? And some folks have questioned, well, what about the power uh, the power that falls off as the battery voltage falls off? And yeah, that's, that, is a, uh, that could be a cause for concern with many servos. Most of the direct power servos I've tested at the outside, it's about 10% loss between fresh pack and pack that's dying on 3S. So we're not, and, and, on, and on those, it was like those 800 ounce servos. So you're still over 700. 700 is probably more than enough, too much maybe. Oh, I thought of a spot where we have to use a lot of steering. Yeah, this servo is completely invisible. I'm just staying full lock all the way down here. It's, it's really strong. Like, I think we might be into this self-described notion of what I call functional power. Because, yeah, are we going to make manufacturer numbers on the bench? I would hope so. That's great. But then you have the actual amount of usable torque. And that is definitely a window. There is certainly, oh, that was the first moment I saw right here. Oh, but that drive up, come on. That was all steer right there. There is a window of torque where if you're below it, you wish you had more. Uh, better to have it and not need it. And above that, it just, it doesn't matter. Like it takes a certain amount of torque to move the front of the vehicle. And if you have that number, that, there was a little pop. We, man, we managed to hold it. Bumper is crammed in. Let's try to get up under here. This line up here is particularly difficult to anyone with full fenders. Now, the full fenders uh, do come back around to help again because what'll happen is off to his passenger side, right about passenger front fender, 
you can get your tire under that overhang. That's a full 360 degree overhang, like it was a, like a trapezoid shaped rock put in upside down. So you can get trapped under that thing on three of the four sides. But if you have full fenders, you just kind of sit on top of it. Push through here. All right, that was just all. That was all Canyon Trails doing their absolute best because then we'll just we'll just do a full pivot. Let's see if we can bring it all the way back around. Man, it it's super it's super transparent. I don't notice the servo at all. It's so quiet. And if I'm up here and I need to cut the other way, like the cuts. There's a, there was a full bind. The cuts are so fast. And because you've got that, it doesn't, like, that doesn't look that fast to me. But in use, it's so fast. It's just more, I guess it's more fidelity. That's a wide shot. But, but it, yeah, it will definitely hold that angle. So I, I think I would have to say, in in full honesty, if we're if we're if we're going to put all the cards on the table, as I think we should, I I can't state with overwhelming confidence how much torque it makes. I know in the abstract, and much of what happens out here on the rocks is the abstract. What happens out here on the abstract is that it makes enough. It feels really good. That little combo there, SE 1200 and that Flash Hobby feels really nice. At no point am I thinking about lack or bonus, I guess, of torque from either. They are giving me exactly what I need. And it will definitely hold torque yeah, it's it's pretty great I had I had my uh, my reservations I had my doubts I didn't have my I, I hadn't you know I had expectations because I wanted to see what it was gonna do but I didn't expect it to perform this well off of a 3 amp BEC with that 6.6 .6 pole at 8.4 volts and I want to say the SE only also goes to 7.4 volts. So this definitely lends back to that usable torque. This is apparently directly in that window. So I, I will have to disclaim and say that while we have, we have swirled together bench performance and real world performance, I will have to say that you're going to have to accept the caveat of Unless you're putting all your stuff in an SE, I can't guarantee your results will be the same, right? At least not on the rocks. I think this servo on 3S, this servo, I wanted to say 3S because everything runs on 3S. This servo on a typical internal BEC from something Hobby Wing or similar, you're gonna get a 7.4 volt input for the servo. You're gonna get at, at least 500 ounces. And I say 500 ounces is at least where we want to be. That's, that's not where we want to be. So I got this guy stuck on stall so many times, including a portion of full Austin Powers activity under the tunnel. But the servo now, and also here in the direct sunlight, we're past 100. The, the servo is now warm. Not hot, but warm. Like if you put your finger on it, it feels warmer than the, the surrounding vehicle. And still no, absolutely no loss of that functional power, that usable torque. When you're steering on climbs like that, doing the three wheel motion, if you're getting good steering performance out of one tire, that's, that's good. you can't. I don't think, at least speaking for myself, I can't ask for more. That's, it's giving me exactly what I want slash need.
it is, I, I'm going to say Canyon certified, and I have had a here's what it comes down to. Here's some information. So the testing part is done. As soon as I say Canyon certified, anything I say beyond that is probably just ramblings. Uh, Robo Kitty, the four wheel steer rift converted to a crawler has been running two 60 kg servos in their flash hobby, 60 kgs. And I've really been interested in switching to receiver powered, uh, the hoping that the 10 amp BEC will manage, will be able to manage two. Because if it can, like say if it could manage two of these, that will free up two of the 60 kgs. And then it will open me up to running other voltages because the Rhino is rated to 6S. And I would like to try a extremely low KV, like in the 500 to 700 range motor in, in RoboKitty and run it on 6S. And 6S direct power servos are grossly expensive in the options that I've seen. So this would be a much more economical option as this servo is about 50 bucks. So $100 for two servos, and then I can I can blow the rest on a, on a nifty motor. Yeah, I really, I really like this servo. Now, am I going to run out and purchase a bunch of replacements to get rid of my Flash Hobby Direct Power 50s and 60s? No. But what I do consider this is, is a completely viable option. If you have, if you're running something like a Rhino, if you're running, uh, CCBEC. If you're running something that puts out a good amount of amps, uh, I don't hesitate to recommend this servo. And it, honestly, it does great on an SE. If you're running a single of these off of an SE, you're going to be fine. I think that stall protection thing, whatever is built into it, I don't notice it at all because we don't feel stall. When we get into a, a hard stall, what do we try to do? We try to steer out of it. I don't think I it is it, it it's probably not the best servo in the world but it is really really good and guys about it was between 50 and 60 you know flash hobby store seems to have these prices that just fluctuate on whims so who knows what it will be there will be a link below it has done more than well enough more than well enough and i i mean uh, unfortunately i can't leave it in there because this is for it came from workbench 21. it is now fully tested Canyon approved, Canyon certified. Really good. One one of my favorite non-direct power servos for sure. So, if you have agreements, disagreements, whatever you might have to say, do leave them in a the comment below. Consider two things while you do. Uh, likes are free, subscriptions are also free. Channel memberships, they cost a tiny. It's mere pennies a day, less than you would spend on a coffee. Um, you know, if you're interested, if you want to help the channel grow, as it were. And that'll do it for this one. And uh, I will bid you adieu. So do comment, like, subscribe, channel memberships, etc., etc., all the usual stuff. And of course, as we often say, in between now and when we meet again, please, one and all, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will see you next time with whatever we have, whatever we have to offer from the canyon. And until then... As a famous woman now from Texas, she's lived in Texas long enough, I guess we'd call her a Texan, as she would say, I'm going to have to let you go. So, we'll see you next time, everybody. Away!